Welcome back everybody, my name is Robert Doman, and in this video we're going to be talking about player choice. Because Sid Meier's famously said, a game is a series of interesting choices. And during my degree, which I studied game development, we were constantly asked, what is a game? And I always thought it was something that you make choices in, right? A game isn't reading a, a wall of text. It's doing stuff, it's, it's choosing between two options. You have to have something to go against. It's not watching a movie, you can't, it's not just playing something out. It's having the chance to fail and having the chance to succeed. You know that you have choice. So, in GB Studio, we're talking about menus, and I have downloaded both Paul Thomas and your usernames, code uh, bases here, you see here, you can download the zip of these, and they have a lot of plugins, I was just playing around and uh, there's only a few that I really want and GB Studio 4 has a lot of this stuff built in now. So yeah, um, definitely play around with this kind of stuff. This is the kind of stuff that will fuel your uh, creative thinking when it comes to making new games and solving problems. But let me just go back to start. If you don't know what GB Studio is, GB Studio is a drag and drop game engine that lets you make Game Boy games for the analog pocket. It lets you export ROMs that you can play on the original hardware or in emulators, and also lets you make games to play on itch.io. You can export it as a web um, zip file and play it in your browser, which is awesome. And today we're looking at the art of menus and uh, choosing uh, different things to let things happen. So uh, choosing different options to let different things happen in your game. So I'll just play this quickly and show you what I've got. I've got a cave scene with a player, a menu coming in from the side, and it is asking us uh, normal art, space, or town. And this is doesn't make any sense to you guys, but to me it means that we're going to be starting the game as, as normal. This will bring us to the art scene. This will take us straight to the space scene, and this is, will take us into town. So if I click on normal, we start the game. Actually, first of all, we have to walk through this little uh, bit. We start the game as if um, nothing has, ch has changed. However, so if we take it back here again and we press B, then we didn't press anything, we didn't choose anything. So when we go through here, it's asking us to make the choice again, and uh, we can press B again, and it will try and stop it, but it will come back up. Because this is a problem with the with this plugin is it doesn't have what the normal GB Studio menus have of um, when you press B, it has an option to say, well, do you want it to set it to zero or do you just want to not let the player ch um, X out of this um, thing, basically? So it doesn't have that. So I've got a while loop playing. It's basically checking to see is the value that we're that we're setting here is zero or not, and if it's zero, it brings the uh, menu back up. So if we take it to the art scene quickly um, Then we'll see this nice piece of artwork that I made for the GB pixel art jam 2024 Hosted by bad dad and GB studio central This was a little jam that took place about 10 days ago And the idea was that we had to pick one of these palettes and Inspire us to make a piece of pixel art that would fit in the Game Boy limitations So as you can see there's a lot of there's 378 entries and they're all using those four different palettes. So if you have no idea about GB Studio, this is the kind of thing you should start with, is making some artwork for it using pixel art, just feeling it out, you know? And my my submission here, let's go offline, is using the famous artwork from the Wii on the screen here that uh, would tell you to go and take a break, go outside, have some fun, see the sun. And uh, I took that feeling because of the colors, put it on a nice retro computer, add a little cowboy hat, and uh, let's go offline. So yeah, did you take part in the GB Pixel Art Jam? If you didn't, and you've never made any artwork in GB Studio before, I definitely recommend checking out the overview here because it actually has some of the limitations of the, G of the Game Boy, for example, the size of the screen, and only having 192 unique tiles. But yeah, definitely check out the GB Studio docs. They're here online and it'll help you get started with everything. But let's get back to the menu. So first of all, I've created a scene and I've made the player start in this scene. The idea of, of having choice in a menu means that you give the player options and these options don't always have to be so obvious as a drop down menu. The idea is that we're setting a variable's value here. So when it comes to menus, the first thing I'm gonna do is add a new event and type in menu so we can display what the normal menu looks like. This one pops up beside what we're doing and shows us what it looks like, so we can easily imagine what it actually looks like. So if we 
go down here and we click on a new variable, variable 19, rename it and call it choice two. Uh, then each of these items we can we can name something. So I think in the thing we have uh, normal, we have art, space, and we have town. And then you can also add, for example, um, the turnip level, the uh, dog in space level, we can maybe the music setting level, and the house level of the player's house. Now we have eight options here, and uh, and these don't have to be set in a menu. They can be set by, for example, walking into a trigger. If we if I just minimize these quickly, and we say set variable to value, and then we can go down and click this choice two, and we can set it to a value we want. So if we remember, one was normal, two was art, three was whatever. Uh, so you just set the value to what you what you want it to be. And then anything can happen, right? What I've been doing is changing the scene. So if the change scene here, we can just click on whichever scene we want. Um, and then you see this, this blue line has been created that goes up to the scene. And that's what the change scene does. It, it moves you from scene to scene. And go back to here. So as you can see, it displays uh, like dialogue does horizontally, but we can also change it to be menu, which then displays vertically, which is, uh, it looks quite nice, but that's not very much option. So that's why I downloaded that plugin um, by Paul Thomas, I think. And if we go to the choice menu here, which is what I renamed it to, if I get rid of it, you can, you can see it's called display advanced menu. That's the event name. Unfortunately, this one doesn't display next to what we're doing like the other one did. So this one requires a bit of trial and error to get right. And the great thing about this menu is that I was able to type in choice menu using the five and six down here and put it in any position I want and then not have to actually have the player click on it. So that's a plus with this, but obviously it has the downside of, of not having the button to make sure that the, it doesn't go off when you press B. When you press B, this menu will go off the screen. And that's why I had the while loop um, to make sure it stays on. So while the value is zero, it stays on the screen. So um, this is a bit complicated for people who have never used GB Studio before, but I'm gonna show it to you guys anyway, because I know most of you in my audience now have seen a lot of my basic videos. I set the normal position to X, one, Y, four. And that means that the X goes one to the, to the right, and then goes down four tiles on the screen. Um, and that leaves space for this choice menu to be displayed at the top. As you see, the choice menu is displayed 0, 1, and then 0, 2. So this choice and menu text is displayed at the very top of the box, of the menu box. And then each of these actual choices is displayed at these coordinates that I've, that I've put here. Uh, one, x1, y4, x1, y6, x1, y8, x1, y10. So when we press play, we can see um, what that actually looks like. So as I've said, the choice menu is at the very top because I set its X and Y position to be there. And the next, the normal and art space and town. So the next thing we need to worry about is how do we get the cursor from, from each of these and how do we make it not go onto the, to say, choice menu. So next to each of these items, and I know that there's a lot of um, boxes here and that's not very, um, well displayed, it's not like separated very well, but you can see number of options six, set to one if normal, and then set to two if art. So we're talking about everything before the set to art here. We're gonna display the word normal, we're gonna set its position to here. Then when we press the left button, it's going to move to zero, and zero means it doesn't move anywhere. So all of these are zero. It won't move if, if, it, if you press these buttons. And then if we press down, it moves to two, and we know that the if set to two, if set to two if is art, so it will it will move the cursor down to the word art, and then just like this, when we press up, we move to one, so that will go up to the normal, and when we press down, it will go to three, which is then space, and just like that, um, on if it's when it's on space and we press up, it goes to two, which is the art one and when we press down it'll go to four which is the town one so using that logic it never moves itself to the choice and menu text so it, we never have to worry about that 
So that means that this menu gives us a lot of power to display anything we like on the screen in this menu. We can have text and then have options under the text. We can, we can do a lot with this menu. Before I was making menus with this logic, but it was, you know, nested if statements and if press move here and trigger boxes and stuff. So it's fantastic that we have an advanced menu as a plugin. So then the next step will be to send the player to this place when they walk through this trigger. So what I have here is a switch and you find it just by typing in switch here. If we open it up again, we can see that I've chosen the variable choice because we're using the data that we've set in the menu, which was using the variable choice. And we have four options, and that's normal all the way down to town. And so when the value is one, we change the scene, and this is just a change scene event. And we set the position, or we set the scene to logo. And then it means that we begin the game completely normally. We set the uh, we send the player to the beginning of the game. Choice value two, we send them to the art scene, which is up here. And choice value three, we send them to the space battle scene. And then choice value four, we send them to the sample town. So you can imagine how if each of these scenes has a choice in it where the player can affect the game and uh, you know talk to someone or annoy them or make them happy, then when they leave the scene, the values can have changed and send them to somewhere else or have the dialogue change when um, they talk to them again because they like the person. So I hope that has uh, helped you to understand how, that we can, how we can use variables in menus to give the player choice to affect the, their gameplay and send them to do different things in our games. And talking about games, I just want to remind you about robertdoman.co.uk where you can buy Take It Racing 2 on cartridge. And unfortunately, I'm going to be closing this website in a month's time. So get it while you can. And uh, I will be bringing up another version of the website uh, sometime next year with more stuff. So uh, stick around for that. And uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I now have Robert Doman Official on Instagram, where I'm posting um, stuff to do with uh, retro gaming, cars, uh, movies. So please give me a follow if you're interested. And uh, and yeah, I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the absolute best. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, let me know what you'd like to see in the next video. Did you find this video useful? Have you used uh, Paul, Thomas, and your usernames uh, plugins before? I definitely think all plugins are worth checking out. Um, some of them some might break your game, so always make a backup and consider that they might not work in GB Studio 4. However, I found that some plugins from older versions that didn't work in GB Studio 3, some for some reason work uh, in GB Studio 4, which is, I, I'm very happy about. So yeah, have some experimenting, get creative, uh, let me know what you've been up to, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.